Miami, Florida, is where tonight's The Blacklist episode opens. Reddington tells Agnes to put powder on her dancing slippers while they are on the phone and says he will be there shortly after settling a little argument. Dinner is being served as Raul and Vincente are in another room with their families. Red wants to make a proposition to them, but he first wants to eat and reminds them of times in the past when they had to put their lives in danger to get an old automobile. Red claims that his plan is reasonable and will succeed as long as they are patient. Vincente offers everyone champagne, but he chooses non-alcoholic. They toast before Vincente, who is about to experience shock, begins grasping at his neck collar. Leon also falls to the ground, they are anaphoptic. Red has experienced this before, no one enters or exits, and patience is now the least of their issues. Wrestler is with Jonathan, the man he is sponsoring at AA, and he wants to give him his two-month chip. Wrestler says that Jonathan's move back in with his wife and the fact that he saw his dealer yesterday without having an urge are all results of Wrestler. In fact, Wrestler feels like the most significant person in Jonathan's life, second only to his wife. Red contacts Dim. Red believes that everyone has been exposed to whatever poisoned them, therefore it couldn't have been the champagne. Red is reminded of Wormwood, a creator of invisible poisons. In the Dominican Republic, a cobalt and aluminum-rich mine is owned by the Sandoval and Montano families. The father of the Montano family died in an accident many years ago. A few weeks later, two Sandovals were murdered in vengeance, and ever since then, they have been sworn rivals. The mining began as soon as the conflict began. Red informs the rest of the group that he is working on the case with the top man, but they won't be leaving the room until they have information. Task Force Cooper advises Herbie to accompany Red and serve as his medical advisor. Herbie opined that Raoul's clinging to his neck as he fell to the ground appeared to be an allergy to human touch. Red claims that someone intends to kill every Sandoval and Montanos. Herbie reports to the task force that because the food was tainted, formerly mild responses are now becoming fatal ones. Wormwood can be linked to the chemical. Vincente's daughter Gabriella Sandoval enters the room and inquires about the peace negotiations. Herbie urges her to go since her dad has passed away. Red is informed by Herbie that he forwarded the material to the task force. Red warned David not to open the window, and when he does, he drops to the ground. Red claims that he was given a list of the attendees. Tito Sandoval's last-minute cancellation caused David to invite his son, Don Montano. Red claims to have been astonished, and as Gabriella glances through the glass, she appears to have been as well. The medications were a waste of time. Red, though, is a fan of Naomi Lindquist's gnocchi. When Wrestler visits her, she claims that, aside from the anxiety, the work was unlike any other since she saw Vincent arguing with his uncle Tito. She claims that she consumed food as well and that she tastes every dish that is served. She is allergic to nuts, if she were poisoned, she wouldn't survive. Jonathan is shocked to get a call from Hudson asking to discuss his connection with Wrestler. He is informed by Jonathan that it is none of his concern. Hudson claims that he is the only person who can provide the proof that Liz Keane was a dishonest FBI agent and Reddington's apparent girlfriend as well as Wrestler. Jonathan is instructed to question Wrestler about Liz Keane. Wrestler receives a telegram from Jonathan as Dem and Siat go to check on Tito. Red, who is alongside his son and Don, claims that while he intended the younger generation to rule, it was not his original intention. The dying, according to Don, ends here. Red claims that Tito is at fault. Gabriella texts, I need your help, now, from the other room. Tito was opposed to the peace, he should have been present but wasn't. Isan's family was being tracked, according to Don, and the meeting took place on his land. Red claims that until Tito is apprehended, there will be no peace. When Sia and embezzlement come, Toti is still in his room. He attempts to flee, but Sia tackles him. When Tito learns what occurred, he exhibits astonishment and claims he didn't kill his family. He acknowledges making a death threat on his uncle, but it was only a threat. Tito was absent because he opposed forming an alliance. Dem asserts that he will rule if everyone perishes. As Dem fastens his shackles, Tito takes hold of his collar, starts coughing, and collapses on the ground after also having been poisoned. Wrestler contacts Jonathan and complains about how work is consuming him and how they've asked him to snoop into someone's private life because a buddy has been taken advantage of. 
When Jonathan inquires as to what occasion brought Wrestler back, he responds that it was the death of Liz, a person he loved, right in front of him. Dem phones Red and informs him that five people have now died as a result of Tito reacting to his touch. Dem deduces that the poison was in the food because, even though Tito wasn't there for the dinner, he smacked one of the plates with his hand during the quarrel he had with the cook. When Herbie speaks to a waitress, she claims that Gabriella gave the order for them to wear gloves, even though she didn't touch the plates. Red tells Gabriella that he has her figured out and that, in contrast to her, he is not frightened to die. Gabriella is afraid that Michael will die. She attempted to kill everyone who stood in the way of a happy ever after, but they resisted Romeo and Juliet. Red opens a door and announces that he is running late for an engagement and that death is a buddy. She begs him not to open the door since doing so may lead to the death of the guy she loves. She just has an IP address on the dark web, so he asks her where Wormwood may be. He hasn't reacted to her attempts to reach him. She only possesses the toxin's empty vial at this time. The task force identifies Wormwood as the bottle source and pursues him with the help of doctors Harris, Dem, and Sia. Red explains to the sons that Gabriella, not the sons, was the one who actually killed them out of love. In a foul mood, Michael accuses Gabriella of being worse than any member of their family who came before them. Dr. Harris requests a lawyer. He is informed by Dem and Sia that they cannot shield him from Red's anger if he does not divulge the information they need. They merely need to remain placed for around another seven hours because there is no cure. Wrestler phones Herbie in the meanwhile and learns that Red has left. We then see Red speaking to Agnes while traveling to see her on an aircraft. Gabriella is brought in for booking as Red shows up for Agnes' ballet performance. Cooper is aware of Red's whereabouts because Red sends a picture of Agnes during the performance. When Agnes glances up from the stage, Pinky is there. Jonathan visits Hudson and claims that after doing additional research on Agent Keen, he has come to the conclusion that she was a criminal. Jonathan agrees to help when Hudson claims they needed to overthrow the task force. When Red returns to his home, Cooper greets him and inquires about his dying desire. Cooper advises quarantining him, according to Cooper. Red details Agnes' performance for him in detail. Then he adds that because he promised to keep his word to Agnes, it is worth the danger in life. Cooper informs him that Agnes is concerned about him and that he should respect that. Red claims that he wants to enjoy all he can while he still has the chance, and Agnes' ballet is the best possible justification for taking a chance on his life.